diggy 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 and here I go okay so basically this is I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Sandra Birchmore case so there has been some recent activity and this is another sad connection to the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office this is today Saturday June 29th Canton Citizen this is by Jay Turner talked about justice for Sandra Birchmore may soon grow louder based upon the Boston Globe's report that said they had new details about her relationship with several former Stoughton police officers who she grew up idolizing they found her dead February 2021 when police responded to a well-being check initially by her employer for failing to show up to work for consecutive days the state medical examiner ruled that she was three months pregnant at the time and had died by suicide so the secret state police investigation found no evidence of foul play but we all know state police in Massachusetts has got so serious issues 19 months after her death however an internal affairs report released by the Stoughton Police Department ignited a flood of interest in the Birchmore case as the public learned of the disturbing allegations made against three of the SPD officers brothers Matthew and William Farwell and Robert Devine who have all since resigned the report concluded that all three men who Birchmore had met as a middle schooler, so this is statutory rape, because the age of consent is 16 and she was only 15, through the department's now defunct Youth Explorers program had inappropriate sexual relations with her and that Matthew Farwell, who was 12 years her senior and married, had an ongoing sexual affair with Birchmore that began when she was 15 and lasted until shortly before her death. But here we go. The state of Massachusetts once again saying there's no foul play. Uh, Nothing the wrong here. They're not going to do anything about these cops committing statutory rape. No, no. That's their job, but they're not going to do that, of course. The allegations against Matthew Farwell, if true, would constitute statutory rape in the state of Massachusetts where the age of consent is 16, and I'm sure that they have evidence that they could use to prove that. But anyways, of course they've all denied any wrongdoing. And why did they resign? Anyways, in December 2022, three months after the release of the IA report, Birchmore's estate filed a wrongful death lawsuit against all three former officers in which they accused the three men of grooming and related repeated sexual assaults from a young age. It says the town names the town of Stoughton and Stoughton PD as defendants, accusing them of negligent hiring, negligent supervision, affliction of emotional distress, and of course they've all denied it. allegations, according to the 14-page complaint filed in Norfolk. Superior Court. Birchmore had endeared significant mental and emotional problems from an early age, but she deeply respected authority figures, specifically police officers, and had found a sense of belonging in the Youth Explorers Program, which was run by Divine. The Farwell brothers, according to the complaint, were instructors in the program and Divine's protégés. The Globe, published on March 2nd, Reporter Laura Cremaldi documents new graphic details of the officer's alleged misconduct that have since become public in the wrongful death as well as in separate proceedings being conducted by the Commonwealth's Peace Officer Standards and Training Post Commission, which is seeking to sanction and decertify all three officers. So there's at least that. According to Globe, which reviewed a tape from November 2023, hiring in the wrongful death suit a lawyer for Birchmore's estate said three former police officers passed her around like she was a toy. At least two officers, they allege, had sex with Birchmore in patrol cars when she was an adult and also encouraged her to engage in sexual acts with others. She's supposed to be a vulnerable adult. Anyways, following the release of the IA report, the Stoughton Police Chief Donna McNamara issued a lengthy statement in which she accused the three former officers of a sustained and deliberate combination of lies, deceit, and treachery, adding that they should have never had the privilege of serving any community as a police officer. In addition to recommending that their police certifications be revoked, McNamara recommended they be placed on the National Decertification Index to ensure they never again serve as police officers anywhere. So Globe, citing post proceedings, said the agency has accused William Farwell of encouraging Birchmore to secretly record her sexual encounters. 
and send him the photos or videos. According to an August 2020 photo that posted his review that depicted the male genitalia of unnamed Stoughton officer. Divine, according to the Post, records details of the Globe story allegedly started engaging in inappropriate suggestive contact, contact with Birch Moore when she was an explorer and by 2020 was having full-fledged sexual encounters with her at various locations. Now, I did see one one report that was just talk about, you know, she's she's an adult, and they totally, of course, omitted the fact that this started when she was 15, which constitutes statutory rape. Yeah, they just conveniently omitted that. The Globe also reports that has con the Post has accused Farwells of lying about the extent of their relationships with Bertha Moores in interviews with state police troopers, and according to February ruling no Norfolk, Superior Court investigators have uncovered numerous sexually explicit text messages between Birchmore and Matthew Farwell. So there's your evidence. And exactly why are the state troopers saying that there's no foul play? And anyways, yeah, no crimes there. In which he acknowledged taking your virginity. Bragging about taking this child's virginity who also has mental problems. You took her virginity and you bragged to others about it. But according to the Massachusetts State Police Troopers, there's no foul play. In his interview with State Police, however, Matthew Farwell said he only had sex with Birchmore two or three times in 2020, meaning that's when she would, she would have been, you know, above 15. Despite confessing only to those encounters, Farwell acknowledged to investigators he went to her apartment on February 1st, 2021, and reportedly to end their relationship. And while several friends of Birchmore have told the Globe that Matthew Farwell was the father of her unborn child, Farwell has denied paternity and blocked Birchmore and all communication platforms after visiting her home on February 1st. You know they can do tests to prove that he was, in fact, the father. Anyways, during that visit, Farwell was captured on surveillance video entering and then leaving Birchmore's apartment building, and the IA report indicates he was the last known person to see her alive. Okay, so, you know, I'll put the link in the description if you want to read this case. It was dated, actually the date on it is not Saturday, June 29th. This is just showing today, I don't know if they did updates, I don't know why, they're just showing today's date. But, but the case has got a date of March 8, 2024 on the link, on the URL link. So I'm not sure if this is just an update because the date here is just showing that this is today's date. So kind of hard to tell, but anyways, in case you haven't seen this, I'll put the link in the description. Yeah, I've kind of been keeping an eye on it, but I haven't really said anything about it, but um, I think that this is, this is definitely an example. I would definitely comment on this as a further example of Massachusetts State Troopers' definite issues of, there's a problem. And also, I want to mention the 71 count indictment. Once again, I want to mention, because anytime I mention the Massachusetts State Troopers, I'm going to mention the 21, no, 71 count federal indictment against Massachusetts State Troopers, former and current, of the basically bribery, extortion, falsifying records, and other charges where they were issuing fake CDO licenses. Basically, just giving the golden treatment to cops and fellow troopers. And the media, of course, reported that there was two unnamed defendants. That's not true, because in if you read the document, I put the link in the description of that video, you will see very clearly that there are many fellow troopers and police officers across the state of Massachusetts that were involved in that scandal. And there's no mention that they are no longer in power. But I think they're being used by the feds in that case. And they were not named. And the problem with not naming them is because you have officers and state troopers both who are involved in criminal activity that should not be testifying in criminal cases, but in fact are. And we don't know if in the Karen Reed trial, if some of those troopers and officers were a part of that scandal. We wouldn't know. But there was definitely people from Canton involved in that scandal, at least one, because it said so in the document of a tow truck driver who half owns the company and name starts with Pete. So, anyways, that's it for this one. I hope you have a good day. Bye.